What's up guys, welcome to Resource Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, we're gonna talk about this sourcing van that I bought. We got it at a government auction. You can see the number is still on there from the city of San Jose. So I'm pretty excited because I'm considering hashtag resale or van life. So I'm gonna need your guys' help on what kind of power solutions if we wanna do solar, how do we do bedding, how do we do the, how do we shower, all these I need help with. So make sure you stay tuned, smash the like button and consider subscribing. We'll see you guys in this episode. This is pretty exciting guys. This is a 97 Dodge wagon. So this is me getting it from the city of San Jose. 116,000 miles. It was just under 600 bucks. So I'm pretty excited about this find. So we're in the van right now. There's a few things that concern me for converting this into van life. One is bedding. There's no power or bedding yet. So maybe build a platform. And then underneath that, you can do storage. That way you have a workspace above. The AC blows super cold, which is super important if you're gonna live in your van. This van is awesome because it has these vented windows. A lot of these old vans don't have any uh, ventilation and sometimes they don't even have windows. So it's important to consider these types of things. Also, the tint on the windows is already super dark, but I don't know what people think. There's some people who do shades, but I think it should be okay as is, but let me know in the comment section below what you guys think I should do on the build out inside here. Also, we're considering um, doing solar if we wanna go that route, maybe building a window up here, just so it's a little more fun. Okay, so you wanna check the lights of the car. So you're gonna go um, headlights, the clicker. This clicker. Can you try the high beams? Okay. Now we're going to go back and check out the tail lights. And now reverse. So for tires, if you're replacing them, you can look actually on the tire and it will tell you the size. 275 is the, or 235 is the height. Um, 75 is the width. And then R15 means the rims are 15 inches. All the information that you need is actually on your tire when you're replacing it. And to find the VIN number of the car, it's usually on the front dashboard on the driver's side or on the door or on the registration. So a lot of cars come with wheel locks, so you're going to need this special tool to actually go on the key. This is the key for this lock right here. This is so people can't steal your wheels. Um, if you lose this, it can be really costly if you need to change your tire, because they'll actually have to break this off. So make sure this comes with it if the tires have a lock nut like that. And this just goes on top and has the same uh, bolt on top as, as an, a normal one. So. Make sure you have this key when you buy a car. Definitely have them pop the hood. And what we're looking for here is corrosion. And you're trying to avoid too much corrosion, too much rust. A little bit of dust is okay. And you want to check the fluids if you can. Windshield wiper fluid. This is ex inexpensive. It's like a buck. Um, but then there's going to be two major ones that you want to check. One is the uh, engine oil and the other is the transmission fluid. When you pull it open, you just want to make sure that it's kind of yellowy. You don't want it black and thin. Um, you just want to check that there's enough oil in the vehicle. Um, it's very fast, very easy to check. Also, this is a good way to, to find out if they maintain the vehicle. If they have service records, that's a huge plus because how they maintain the car can really affect how long the total life of the vehicle is. And again, pretty straightforward, pop this open. And you know, sometimes the actual stand is broken too, which can make it a pain. I recommend, this is an inexpensive thing to order as well if your vehicle doesn't have that. Workspace is important for me because if we're doing shipments for Amazon FBA or thrifting and we want to work on a computer, these seats can actually swivel around. So I want to know what you guys think of that solution as far as seating because I do plan on working in the vehicle. So whether it's literally building shipments or putting packages together, there's already two chairs built into the van, which is awesome. It saves a lot of space. Also, this thing is huge. It's almost six feet wide, so I can fit pallets in here. And I've already purchased two pallets, so I'm considering picking it up in this van. But let me know what you guys think of that as a solution. This could be a sourcing vehicle. It could also be a vehicle to live in, go cross country. I know a lot of resources talk about getting an RV, but this is a lot more practical because it just fits in a normal parking spot.
So there's a few things I also want to ask you guys about. One is kitchen. How am I going to cook stuff in here? Would you guys go propane? There's also people who set up a grill that can slide out of the back end of the van. But I'm just trying to weigh, should I be cooking outside to keep the inside as smell free as possible? Or should I work in or uh, cook stuff inside? That's a concern. Um, so cooking is one. The other one is toilet situation. What should I do for that if I'm living on the road? And then finally showering. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to approach that. Right now, gyms in California are closed, um, but depending on what state I'm in, I'm not sure exactly the solutions for showering. But if I decide to take this all the way to Florida or Maine, these are a few of my concerns. Kitchen, toilet, and showering. So one concern with van life is also insurance. Right now, it's just got regular two-way insurance on it. Um, but if you're gonna live in it, that's actually more like RV insurance, which is a little bit different. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of research to find out what it costs to actually live in a vehicle like this. Also, when you're going over the car, when you purchase it, you wanna check all electronics, all door handles, all windows. This stuff is super expensive to repair. So it's good to have a list of that when you're buying it from the original owner. Now, on an auction, it's always gonna be as is. So it's not like you can choose what you get, but for the price of 600 bucks, I mean, this is super awesome. It leaves us a lot of room to customize it. We're considering potentially putting like a rhino lining along the bottom of it. Let us know what you guys think we should do to waterproof it. Although right now, the way that it is, I don't think a lot of people would pull us over because it just looks like a work truck. There is no, nothing, you know, like van life about it, unless you cover it in bumper stickers or you paint it orange, then you're going to be sort of like a cop magnet. So right now, as is, I don't think people would bother you. Literally looks like a work vehicle. All right. So pro tip, these back vents, actually the exhaust will go in while the car is idling. So just make sure if you guys get a van to look at these solutions because you don't want to be breathing in that toxic air. So make sure the vents are closed when you're idling. So one thing that I'm curious about is actually rooftop storage. There is no sunroof, but there's a lot of room up here to potentially store items or a bike rack or a canoe. Not sure what we want to put up here, but it's cool having this space up here because it can add a lot of storage space to your RV experience. Here are my local spot Mickey's. They are awesome. They're going to do the best they can to actually remove the numbers uh, from the vehicle. Also, we got some overspray like from maybe a concrete truck or something down here. So hopefully that'll get removed as well, but excited to see what happens after a full detail. Okay, so they just finished the detail, which is awesome. So they were able to clean up all the glass, they vacuumed, they sprayed everything down. So I'm actually pretty excited with how it turned out. So now we should figure out how to equip this van, how to rig it out. So super excited to hear you guys' feedback. Let's check out the van. So they cleaned out all the trash in the interior of the van and it looks super ready to be built out. So pretty easy to clean out something like this since it was used as a work vehicle. So pretty excited to see what will happen on the interior here. So I can actually fit almost three pallets inside of this van. So I'm pretty excited about the capabilities of this. Also, I can pick up anything heavy like that treadmill or furniture that I picked up at those previous yard sales. So super excited about that. Let me know what you guys think I should do with this van. Should I flip it? Should I convert it to van life for, as a reseller and go across the country? Should I just use it to pick up uh, pallets that are local? But I'm pretty excited because I can do some bulk purchases with, with this. And, you know, as a government vehicle, it really doesn't, you know, attract a lot of attention. So I definitely could live in this. So until next time, guys, make progress daily.